Good eyes. Um, this panel is about the future of uh, human simulation, and uh, rather than describe our our simulation products, I'm going to show you some slides that I think are pointing in the direction that I see human simulation going. And at our own company, that's informed strongly by our work not only in human modeling, but also in robot development and robot modeling. Because uh, we're finding that robot development uh, in, uh, requires uh, certain results from our simulation uh, that are pushing those simulation tools. Uh, you see some of the robots we're developing with the company here, uh, Big Dog and our humanoid pet man are underway. But uh, these same tools apply to our, our marine and solar modeling work. Uh, typically, um, there we go. Typically, we'll start a robot project by modeling the behavior of that robot in simulation as a means of developing control software. And when that control software is working on um, in simulation, we can apply that to hardware. And what that does is it speeds up the uh, development time, shortens the development cycle. So here's our first experiment at some bipedal walking, uh, which we modeled first in simulation uh, as part of a larger effort to develop uh, a set of humanoid robots. Um, and here you see uh, this prototype robot, a biped, um, which we developed to uh, uh, develop uh, bipedal walking. Um, and now you see the humanoid model that uh, we're actually currently working on uh, here in simulation. This is a robot we're developing for the Army uh, for ChemBio uh, protective equipment testing. Um, this robot is uh, going to be used at Dugway Proving Ground in a chemical uh, chamber environment where uh, chemical sensors embedded uh, in the skin of the robot uh, are going to detect whether or not protected equipment uh, performs adequately, whether or not it leaks. Uh, the robot ultimately will operate in uh, a live agent uh, environment. It will walk, uh, crawl, uh, go down to prone and get back up. And this functionality is going to provide uh, something to the, that the Army has sought for a long time but never had, which is a way of measuring in real time how a suit performs, where it leaks, and how uh, the motions of that, uh, uh, of that suit uh, relate to the, the <coughs> performance. So um, but one of the important things about developing uh, robots is that the motion, the mobility is really dominated by dynamic events. And you've heard the word dynamic a few times today uh, versus static. Uh, you can't model the static strength of a robot and do an adequate job at predicting how strong it needs to be. And we need to predict strength for actuator sizing, for power plant sizing. Uh, we need to know these things uh, during the design phase of a robot. Furthermore, the robot has to be robust to variations. It has to tolerate an outdoor terrain. Uh, we're not going to be able to predict uh, uh, whether or not the ground is flat. Uh, even if you could, the robot probably couldn't sense it adequately. So, uh, it needs to be uh, very tolerant to these kinds of things. Um, and the same holds true if you're looking at a warfighter. Uh, I would argue that the strength required to carry that, those, those loads um, are dominated uh, by the need to deal with rough terrain, to remain dynamically stable, uh, to be upright. And uh, so the same principles that we need for robot development is relevant for uh, the warfighter modeling applications as well. And so we take those principles and apply them to human models in trying to predict warfighter performance. Uh, we put, we model the equipment, and you notice the backpacks are bouncing relative, you know, bouncing on the, the back of this guy. That's because we're trying to predict those dynamic loads, and uh, we have uh, forces of interaction between that equipment. If you're diving the prone and that backpack is going to fly up and hit the helmet and push it over the head, you'd like to know that before you fabricate equipment. These are all dynamic events uh, and not adequately represented in, in a static environment. So, uh, but the challenge uh, of developing these kinds of behaviors is that you have to have you know, something called a control system, something that's coordinating uh, torques at the joints uh, to produce a behavior. And, that's, uh, and that can be very challenging and typically has been a bottleneck in the development either of human simulation software that uses these physics-based approaches or in developing robots. Um, we are a fan of using motion capture as a starting point. Um, and we'll start by you know, collecting data from a warfighter doing something like this, a combat role. Um, but as uh, Dr. Busick pointed out earlier, you know, just replaying that data or just 
just precisely following that trajectory really isn't adequate. Um, the way we use it is uh, try to understand the motion and really decompose what's going on. If you look at this guy closely, he's almost walking across the ground. He's using his feet to push off. And, and you use that to develop a strategy, a control strategy, uh, which you can then implement in simulation. And when you have that strategy, now I have a model of a, a warfighter that is tolerant to, to changes. Uh, this is not a single optimized torque trajectory or position trajectory. There's actually an algorithm underneath there that's saying, I want to roll, I want to roll about this fast, and if I, my backpack's a little heavier or a little lighter, I'm going to adjust how much I'm pushing off to do that. Because ultimately, I want to be able to change the equipment on the warfighter and then see what happens and see if there's a change in energy consumption or in uh, contact forces with the ground. And those are the kinds of data we're showing here. So I have two different backpack configurations, one where the, a piece of equipment was uh, right in the middle of the back and one where the piece of equipment was on the side. And uh, what I'm plotting is the energy over time. And of course, the one where the, the lump was on the back, he had to roll higher. So there was more energy required to get over. Um, and so you need a control system that can adapt to this, this change in configuration in order to do that kind of A-B experiment. Now, uh, where do I see the future going? So as I said earlier, uh, one of the limitations of this approach has typically been the development of these controllers is complicated. It takes time. Um, and yet, uh, we really want to be able to automate this task. We want to be able to automate a task to adapt to terrain or anthropometry changes, carried load, or, or task. And there are uh, new approaches on the horizon which are going to enable that. Uh, these are still control-centric approaches, but they use optimization within a control framework to build characters that can be robust to disturbances. So here, <laughs> these, the pelting by these balls is unanticipated, an unexpected event. And yet the character is remaining, and he's having to stand up and remain stable. But he's tolerating uh, the bulk of it. Oh, that got um, They can also be tolerant to changes in anthropometry. So if I create an alien character that's got a big head, uh, additional mass, uh, the control system uh, can deal with that change and still uh, perform the task. Um, and of course, the same is true if I, uh, as, especially with some of our robotics work, you need tolerance to the terrain. So here, the terrain is moving uh, and is active. So what we see the future of uh, human simulation, and again, this is driven a lot by our robotics work because you need these robots to be tolerant to these things to, to actually function in the world, is to deal with these kinds of uncertainty uh, in a systematic way and to automatically create these behaviors. So we see simulation tools that are, we're going to be able to automatically create behaviors. Uh, we're going to, those are going to be dynamic behaviors uh, that predict dynamic loads, not static loads. Um, and that these tools are going to facilitate not only uh, soldier modeling and energetics prediction, but also things in, in the robotics world. Thank you very much. Thank you.